What is up? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we are finally working on the brown wagon again. And if you don't know what the brown wagon is, I'll give you a little recap. So this is our brown wagon. It's an automatic front wheel drive model. I bought it a very long time ago to have a parts car for this. And then this ended up being on a back burner when we started getting the drifting and stuff. Then I ended up getting this parts car, so I didn't need the brown one anymore since this one's completely wrecked and I didn't care about taking it apart uh, like I was gonna do the brown wagon. Since now, as those are getting older and older and older, they're getting more expensive, getting rarer. My plan now is to get it running, get it manual swap, also get a multi-point fuel injection swap with all the stuff we got pulled from an SI that I got, which is another parts car we got that kind of shared for Sydney's car and then the brown wagon. Where we sit now, which is where I left off seven months ago is we were refreshing this motor before we put it back in the car. And where we left off exactly on this motor was, we were done with the head, we we're finishing this right here, and I think I was going to take off the head, do the head gasket and everything, put it back on, do time belt, and get this thing made it back up with the transmission, back in the car. Let's start there, let's start getting this head off, get the head gasket replaced, and go from there. Well, I am glad I did pull this because it looks like this head gasket was either close to going or had gone. It's another cheap one just like this, which is fine. These are good. Just not if you're like trying to make power or anything. If it's just a stock car, these are plenty fine. But yeah, this one is uh, definitely seen better days. So I'm glad we took this off. Also, we clean the heads of the pistons, make sure that's all good. And we can check the cylinder walls out and make sure those are all right. Cylinders definitely have some, some rust in them. Feel like maybe we can put some oil in there, kind of wipe it around, cycle a couple of times, and hopefully it'll help the cylinder walls out. But there is still cross hatching, so I think we are good. So I went down to Harbor Freight, got us a little detailing brush kit with steel brush, nylon brush, and then a brass brush. And we used the brass brush to clean the top of these pistons. Um, as you can tell, Done a pretty good job. I've already cleaned them a little bit with brake cleaner and just like a rag, but this is with the brass brush and you can definitely tell it is a lot smoother. So this should help in the long run. Um, also cleaned up the cylinder walls, which I don't have my light over here now, but looks a little bit better than it did earlier. So let's go ahead, get the rest of these cleaned up and see if we can make them shine like this one. <laughs> We got all of these cleaned up, turned out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the result. Um, we still have to get all this old head gasket off. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna do that yet, cause it is, it's pretty caked on there. I usually just razor blade stuff off, but uh, we're gonna have to find a more harsher method. Um, same on the head over there. But moving over to the head, I would like to clean, just like I did there, all in here like we did on Raymond's car, which is out there. So get all that cleaned up and figure out how to get this off and same over there. Alright, so we got all the head gasket material off the head and the block. Now we need to move down here and get the rear main seal and then the seal for the actual housing that holds the rear main seal. With it on the stand, I can't really get to it. So we're going to put it on the hoist now and hopefully get all that, clean up that area since I wasn't able to clean that when it was out there with the transmission on it. So let's get this thing up in the air, get all that taken off.
so we got the bottom end done I got the rear main seal and all that sealed back up and then I also got the oil pan sealed up as well that was not planned because my Honda bond dried up and I had to cut it to get the rest out the bottom to do this and I was like ah I really need to do the oil pan too I didn't want to use some cheap gasket I wanted to try to use the Honda bond so we made it work um, I really needed to clean out the oil pan but I didn't have any brake cleaner or anything so hopefully this seals up because I think it was on this side it started leaking uh, right here and I hope it didn't get into the RTV which this is just a precaution it should still seal up hopefully but we'll see what happens so now it is finally time to mate the head with the block Alrighty, after another sweaty head install, we're all torqued down, ready to go. I swear every bolt squeaked just a little bit to sound like it was snapping and I was sweating so much putting this on. But we're good, all of them torqued down to spec, none of them snapped, thank God. So up next is we gotta do the timing belt, get all that put on, put it in time, and then we're almost ready to take this thing off the engine stand. So, let's get to it. So I'd like to take a break from putting the motor fully back together and move on to the transmission. So if you remember a couple episodes back, we got the transmission out of the same car that we got the motor out of. And in the back, as you can see, the two bolt holes are completely screwed. But this one has thread still at the very bottom. I think it has maybe like four or five. I think that should be good, hopefully. Enough to when there's three of them in here and clamping down on that, we should be good. This is the one we have to fix. There's, there's nothing. It looks like the bolt actually got broken off in there. So my plan is to put this on, bolt it down, and then drill through there using this as a guide so it doesn't get all off center and then doing a good old Healy coil and hopefully we don't mess anything up. So, let's get the drill in. Well, that did not go as planned. As you can see right here, I blew through the side because it would not cut straight. Since this is hardened steel and this is just aluminum, I could not get it to follow where that bolt was. While trying this one out, these threads pulled, which I don't even think there's threads in there. I just got lucky by doing it by hand. So I was gonna have to fix that one next. Um, and then the same for this one. So whoever had this beforehand had tried fixing all three of these for some reason, and they were all just screwed up. So at this point, I'm, ju I'm just done with this one. I thankfully have two other transmissions that came with that parts car all the way over there. And I think they should be good. They don't have any nasty noises in them. And just for my little like two minutes worth of research, um, these are both uh, L3 transmissions. So I think that means they should at least be five speeds and not four speeds. So that's good. Um, I'll need to double check that though because it would suck to put all this together and it'd be a four speed. But regardless, I need to mark that one up, make sure I know it's the SI transmission. Maybe one day we can take it all apart, take that housing to someone and have them fix it. Moving on. <laughs> 
that sucks kind of bummer but thankfully i got saved and i do keep parts all over even though it looks like a mess sometimes it does come in handy so back on to that guy And there you go, we finally have the motor ready to go, put it in the car. But before we get to that point, we need to take the engine harness out and then where it goes into the cabin harness and replace that with the SI harness that we got that is multi-point fuel injection. Because this is still dual point fuel injection. But all of that stuff is gonna be in the next episode. I'm gonna end it here since we've reached our goals and getting it ready to go in the car. I appreciate you watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.